you got? Mm, Andrea Phelps. A sixth grader? Come on, Kel, I got an image to protect. Come on, Ollie, she's real mature for her age, and she thinks she'll look like Donnie most. I don't know. I mean, this is a lot of trouble to be going through for a stupid Valentine's dance. You really think Karen would go with me? Only one way to find out. Um, maybe I should work up to Karen. She's so cool. Yeah, I'll start with that girl from India with the red dot on her forehead. Come on, Ollie. Karen's your first choice. Call her up. Swing for the fences. Uh, what do I say again? All right, we'll go through it one more time. I'll be Karen. I'm wearing a sweater. Now be positive and aggressive, and tell me how pretty I am. Girls love that stuff. Ring. Hello? Hi, Karen. This is Oliver Cleaver. You know, you really are the prettiest girl in the class. And, uh, well, I'd love to take you to the Valentine's dance a week from Saturday. I'd love to. Thanks for calling. <laughs> See how easy it is? Now call her up while you're still hot. Uh, no. What are you doing? Hi. Uh, this is Oliver Cleaver. You know, you really are the prettiest girl in the class, and I... Hi, Mrs. Robbins. You really have a lovely speaking voice. Is Karen there, please? Well, now you know her mother. That can only help. Hi, Karen. Would you... I mean, could I... Uh... Look, I'm thinking of running for student council. And I'm taking a poll. Would you vote for me? Fine, bye. You didn't ask her to the dance. Why should I dance with a girl that wouldn't even vote for me? So that's it? You're just gonna give up and throw in the towel? <sighs> Kelly, dating isn't for everyone. This country needs a certain number of bachelors. You're hopeless. <sighs> Look, Kelly, what would happen if everybody went out on a Saturday night? Think about it. There'd be no ushers at the movies. <sighs> No guy in a stupid hat to deliver your pizza. It'd be total chaos. <laughs> Thanks. But I'll just spend that night at Earl's. He's working on a model aircraft carrier, and his fingers are too fat to fit in the bridge. Oh, hey, Ollie. Hi. Hi, honey. Boys are so stupid. All right. I knew you'd finally figure that out. <laughs> so, uh, who tells Duffy? You and me. Can you believe it? I find all these girls who are willing to go out with Ollie, but he won't even call them up. Well, oh, Kelly, uh, sometimes it uh, isn't easy to pick up a phone and call a girl. It'd be pretty scary. Wait a minute. The boys of today are going to grow into the men tomorrow, command armies, play pro football, but they're too scared to ask a girl to dance? Well, sometimes it's worse to get rejected than it is to get blindsided. It's tough. And you think it's easy for us girls? We're at your mercy. We have to sit around and wait for the phone to ring. Kelly, honey, when have you ever had to wait over three minutes for your phone to ring? You can joke if you want to, but Ollie has no self-confidence. And that could lead to trouble in school, sports, and before you know it, he's handing out name tags at a senior prom. <laughs> There's my phone. Hi, Gus. This is June Cleaver. I lost my partner for this bridge tournament, and I remembered that you... Gus, Gus, I didn't say that the bridge was on fire. Gus? Gus? Mom, I want to apologize again for canceling out on the bridge tournament, but I've got so much work to do before Mr. Facuto's visit. Can't Lumpy help? That's why I've got so much work. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Kip. See you later, Dad. Kip, in just 30 minutes, I could teach you to play bridge. I don't think so, Grandma. I mean, I still have trouble with the cap on the aspirin bottle. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good evening, Mrs. Cleaver. Hi, Eddie. Uh, young Kip, I want to thank you for the use of your death wish tapes. Most inspiring. You're welcome, Mr. Haskell, but uh, I didn't know you borrowed them. Well, nobody was home, but uh, I knew you'd want me to help myself. <laughs> I don't believe I'm asking this, but Eddie, do you play bridge? I'm desperate for a partner tonight at the bridge tournament. Me sitting around bidding hearts with a bunch of old fogies? <laughs> First prize is $500. I find that a tug on the ear works very well if you're long on clubs. 
Now, I'll show you the rest of my signs in the car. Eddie, I don't cheat. Mrs. Claver, you wound me. I'm merely suggesting that clear communication is the bedrock of any successful partnership. Good night, Kip. I'll see you later. Oh, good luck. Don't worry, we won't need luck. <laughs> Hey, just the guy I was looking for. Uncle Wally, if you're wondering about the next payment for the bodywork on your T-Bird, I'll have it Monday. No, nah, no problem. But uh, what are you doing Saturday night? Well, you know, I was going to go out with that Swedish stewardess I've been dating, but I decided now nah, I'll just stay home and study for my chemistry test. <laughs> yeah, well, look, this uh, client of mine sent me four passes to a movie preview, and uh, well, I was thinking that maybe you and Ollie could double date. <laughs> Ollie, come on. He's afraid to walk on the same side of the street with the girl. How's he going to find a date? Well, I thought maybe you could get him one. You know, that's one of the nicer things you can do for a little brother. Come on, Uncle Wally. It's not like I can ever help him out. I mean, I paid for his karate lessons. I gave him my bike. I even talked him out of it when he thought he could jump from our roof to yours. Uh, yeah, well, that's all well and good, Kip, but, uh, you know, being a big brother is an ongoing thing. It doesn't stop with saving him from bullies on the playground. All right, let's just suppose that I could find him a date. It would never work out. I mean, the only movies Ollie likes are the kind where guys carry around sharp objects. Look, Kip, Ollie doesn't have any self-confidence, and you can help him out. You know, sometimes I think if I'd help your dad out a little more in his formative years, your mom wouldn't be living in Europe right now. Hmm? I'll see what I can do. Changing my shirt. Come on, Ollie, you've changed it four times already. You don't have any clean ones left. You don't really need me tonight, do you? <sighs> Look, I told you, Cheryl won't go out with me unless I bring a date for a little sister. And you're sure she's cute? I don't want to go out with just anyone, you know. What's my date's name again? Connie. Connie and Cheryl Fox. A couple of foxes, right? <laughs> we can't miss. Why do I have to meet her father? Why can't I just stay in the car? It, it just doesn't work that way. Her father has to see you before he lets her go out of the house. Well, if he only judges people on appearances, I don't want any part of it. I'm not going. Look, you're not backing out on this one. Look, I got a new model of the USS New Jersey. It's got 19,000 parts. It's gonna keep me busy tonight and probably every other night until I'm 21. Hey, fine, build your model. Sure, that's going to do wonders for your social development. Hey, with any luck, maybe you'll move up to ham radios and you can talk to other lonely guys. <laughs> Ollie, say something to her. Is that a new blouse? Uh, yes, it is. Are they on sale or something? I see a lot of girls wearing them. <laughs> Ollie, what's with you? This was a bad idea. This was not a bad idea. Did you see the way she looked at me when we were getting out of the car? Ollie, you almost put her eye out with a comb. Well, she shouldn't have been sitting so close to me. <laughs> You're too nervous. You gotta relax. Just be yourself, okay? Wait a second. I got a better idea. Just watch me... And do what I do. Susan, you look beautiful tonight. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. How clumsy of me. Why do you get out of those wet clothes? Just rub in the bathroom? <laughs> Hello? Mom, what are you doing? I just talked to you an hour ago. Yes, I'll be there tomorrow. Mom, will you cut it out? I've got company. Yes, it is a girl. No, I'm not going to end up like this. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years old. Look, Mom, we'll need something to talk about tomorrow. Why don't we make a good setup? Pretty good movie, huh? Yeah. Funny. Romantic. Mom, I'm not going to get rid of you. Mom, Mom, I'm 30 years old. I need a life of my own. Oh, what'd you do that for? my brother did. 
<laughs> yeah, I see. I'm supposed to do everything he does. Why? Well, it, it sounded like a good idea at first because, um, well, this is sort of like my first date. Really? Yeah, and you're so pretty and everything that it's hard for me to relax. I think that's so sweet. You do? Uh-huh. You're different from other guys. I am? Most guys try to be so cool, but you're yourself. Wonderful world. <sighs> Everything seems so different when you're in love. And it's all due to my big brother. How can Connie and I ever repay you? You could shut up and go back to sleep. Oh, I asked her to the Valentine's dance. She said yes. It's kind of nice to know exactly who you're going to grow old with, marry, have your children and grandchildren with. Of course. There's always... Taxes, mortgages, college tuitions for Ollie Jr. and little Tracy. I wonder how much a paleontologist makes an hour. Maybe we'll consider a simpler life. A farm in Connecticut. We'll bake bread and make our own candles. Good idea. That'll help save for tuition for little Tracy. Oh, but you know what the best thing is? I'm in love! I'm in love! I'm in love! Morning. Grandma, if you were a girl, what would you like to get from your man? Well, why don't you pick some flowers from the backyard for your little friend? Little friend? Grandma, Grandma, Grandma. <laughs> Connie is a woman. She deserves the best. Fancy furs, fine jewelry, and I'm the guy that's going to give them to her. <laughs> Hope he gets out of his pajamas first. Furthermore, Duffy, Ollie gives her a rose every day, walks her to school, waits for her after class, sends her love letters, and even sometimes vacuums her room. And at the Valentine's dance, he promises to dance every single dance with her. So what have you done for me lately? Don't you doll face me, Duffy Guthrie. My finger's still green from that ring you gave me. That ought to do it. Hi, Oliver. Hi, how was lab? Gross. We chloroformed some crickets. Oh, my poor little bunny lips. Oliver, I have to talk to you. <sighs> Me too. You know, the last eight days... Nine of... days. <sighs> oh, yeah, you've been counting too? They've gone by like a shot, haven't they? Ollie... That's why I have to give you this. It's authentic cubic zirconium. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, but that's not all. You also get these. Matching bracelet and necklace. Well, I can't accept these. Sure you can. And there's plenty more where these come from. What's your hat size? Oliver, I mean, I know you like me a lot. A lot? I still have our junior mitt from the night we met. Why? Well, see, that's the problem. Wait, you want to keep it? No, um, the problem is... You like me more than I like you. What? I've been meaning to tell you this for the past few days. I don't think we should see each other anymore. But we love each other. Oliver, you're really nice, but with the gifts and the phone calls and the auto club membership, I just feel smothered. What about the dance? Oliver, it just isn't working. Well, come on, the whole world knows about us, even some eighth graders. I'm sorry. What about that night at the movies? 
Well, don't get me wrong. I, you're a great kisser. But I think we should just be friends. Friends? Uh, sure. Well, that's fine. I really didn't like you that much anyways. And the jewelry? Well, it was real cheap. And it came with an all-purpose flashlight, and I kept it for myself. <laughs> I never meant to hurt you. Goodbye. Wow, Ollie. Kissing her right in public. You're the kind of boyfriend every girl dreams of. Ah, uh, Mrs. Cleaver. I'm here to throw myself at your feet, hoping that you'll reconsider and join me at tonight's bridge semifinals. We really do make quite a team. Eddie, you cheat. Ooh, there's that ugly word again. <laughs> Mrs. Cleaver, I reiterate, those were not signals. I actually had a severe case of heartburn. Good night, Eddie. <laughs> Oliver, aren't you running a little late? You don't want to keep Connie waiting. Isn't this exciting? Your younger son's going to his first dance. And it might not have happened without Kip's help. Oh, mm -hmm. I really didn't do all that much. Although, if it wasn't for me, he'd probably have a lonely, shallow life ahead of him. Look at you. Boy, that sweat of your grandmother got you looks great. Oh, Oliver. Now, you be sure and have a picture taken of you and Connie at the dance, because this is the night you'll always want to remember. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget this night. Here's a few bucks for after the dance. Now, you be home by 11 and call us if you decide to elope. <laughs> you dog, you. <laughs> oh, Oliver. Honey, don't forget Connie's corsage. Thanks, Grandma. You look great on her. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll wait up. Have fun. Bye. Ben. Hey, aren't you supposed to be at the dance tonight? My date dumped me. I gambled at love and lost. Yeah, women are scary. I guess it's like that song says, love is a battlefield. So what are we supposed to do about it? Face it, Oliver. Guys like us aren't that great looking. We're no good at sports and we're not in a rock band. But there's millions of airplane and boat models out there. And we're going to build every one of them. Maybe I'll be a hobo. Ride the rails, play the harmonica around burning trash cans. And what else is there? Boy. Uh, you and Connie sneak out of the dance for an intimate rendezvous over a milkshake? Yeah, uh, she's in the bathroom right now. Oh, well, then, uh, we won't interfere. Come on, Kip, let's go. Uh, didn't Connie like her corsage? Well, it didn't go with her dress too well. It had some bugs, and... She stood you up, right? No, Connie would never do anything like that. Because, um... Yesterday, she dumped me like a truckload of wet sand. That's a tough break, Ollie. Yeah, I've never been dumped before. Hey, it happens to everybody. But it really hurts. I could sure use one of those talks right now where you tell me everything's gonna turn out okay. Well, I know it hurts, but in time, you'll get over it. That's it? <laughs> Kip, have you got anything? Look, Ollie, Dad's right. It happens to everybody. I mean, look at me. I've been dumped twice this year. Three times. No, Dad. You see, I told you, Lenora and I mutually agreed to see other people. Yeah, but I really liked Connie. 
I don't understand why she couldn't like me back. Neither do I. You're fun, you're sensitive, you're a great kid. And one day you're going to meet a girl that appreciates those qualities. Believe me, there are plenty of fish in the sea.